Hi, this is Hamie from Heavy Petting, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Take it live. Cool, so we're back. Do I have a second? I gotta put some veggies on my dog's paw. <laughs> Can I use that in the podcast? Yeah, yeah. Just give me one second. I'll, yeah. I'll just stay on the line. I won't be long. I'm back. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but my he's got a yeast infection on his paws. And you, only- never, you never know what you're going to hear on the Brutally Delicious podcast. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> if it works down there, it can work on a dog's yeah. paw. You know what I'm saying? I guess. <laughs> Have you uh, listened to any of the new Slipknot or the new Corn? No, I haven't. I'm, I mean, I was never the biggest fan. Yeah. And so I still am not. And I know that's probably <laughs> going to go against everybody <laughs> out there listening because everybody's buying it. But I don't know that everybody's not buying it because it's Slipknot and Corn. And not really giving a shit that it's it's slipknot and corn, slipknot and corn, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. You know, one thing that I would like to talk about too is the new tool. I was, oh, I was, yeah. I was disappointed. Yeah, I was like, wh- I kept waiting for it to like break open like a tool song, and it just was ten minutes of just nothing. Yeah. So all three of those, I mean, I was very underwhelmed, I think is the best word. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to spend 10 years making a record, at least put out a good first single. Like, maybe the rest of the record's good, I don't know, but... I don't know, and maybe, you know, we're going to lose listeners for that, or... I don't know. I don't know if Dale or Christina listen to this, but... If you're upset by my tool comments, (laughs) feel free to drop me a line. Right. Go see Chris. He'll put some Vagisil on your paws. <laughs> <laughs> or anywhere else, uh, you know, you may need uh, Vagisil. <laughs> Jesus. Where the hell is this podcast going? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today on today's Brutally Delicious podcast, by the way, I'm Bruce Moore. And I'm Chris Seegers. And we're going to speak with the heavy metal legends, Heavy Petten. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys, yeah, those guys from, I remember listening to him back in the late 80s, mid 80s, whatever it was. I know they're from Scotland. I know they opened up for a lot of big bands, hit the road with Ozzy. I believe they did some shows with Sabbath, and they were out there. And, uh, you know, I kinda, never, I've, I've never heard them before. Uh, so just before we came on, I listened to <laughs> In and Out of Love. Yeah. Yeah. Decent tune. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were, ste- well, I hate to say it, but stereotypical 80s stuff. I mean, it was right along the lines of Bon Jovi or any of those other really big produced 80s bands. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, just looking at the names of their songs In and Out of Love, Broken Heart, Love on the Run, Love Times Love, Victims yeah. of the Night, you know? Shout it out like hardcore 80s song titles. Yeah, very anthemic. I don't know if that's a word, but very, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, oh, yeah. Fist pumping. It's, it's yeah. A, it's arena rock. Yeah, good stuff. So let's go ahead and try. Like, in and out of love, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Arms in the air. Let's, oh, one other thing I wanted to say, and I'm going to put this out there for everyone. I think our show may be the veritable or proverbial rabbit's foot for anybody coming on because I'm just reading some updates from Oculum Day. Remember Josh? Yeah, did the yeah. Show with us? Great guy. Yeah, they're uh, they're signed up for a bunch of summer festivals. They've got all kinds of stuff going on. Oh, that's cool. When we talked to him, he's like, oh, we don't know what we're going to do. Yeah, but maybe it's, you know, the Chris Bruce rabbit foot vibe. My own will. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Credit. I'm taking credit for all this shit, but why not? Yeah, hey, it, we did it. They did. We did it. So they didn't if do you're listening to this, <laughs> it was all us. <laughs> if you're listening to this and you're looking for that big million dollar record deal, uh, just book a show with us. Yeah, and we'll we'll let you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right, let me see if I can get them. Amy, how hey. are you, man? I'm doing just dandy. I just get back through working out, so I feel like shit, really. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, 
That's my partner, Chris, and it's nice to meet you. Thanks How for you joining doing? us. Hey, Chris. Nice to meet you, brother. You too, man. How are you today? You doing all right? Yeah, no, doing fine. Trying to get healthy for this tour. Yeah. But, you know, whoever told you that working out and all that stuff's good for you is full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> God. Well, hey, me, that's going to bring me right to my first question, and I hate to jump right in, but you, you breached the topic. So how does it or how do you prepare for a string of shows or a tour or tour after you know being doing this for so long and being of a certain age? It's got to be a lot more difficult, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, the good thing is uh, it's like. Uh, I've been working out for a while and, and I've always been kind I've always been healthy. So that, that's, that's been a big major plus, but, uh, and I don't drink as much as I used to. So that's right. another added bonus. But, uh, so those days are kind of behind me. I drink in a bottle of Jack a day. So that, yeah. wow. <laughs> so, so it's easier now to kind of get up in the morning and everything. Right. Cool. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's, it's, it's harder, you know, but it's at the end of the day, it's worth it, you know? And the main thing is I've been, it's, it's keeping my voice in shape, you know? So that's the real reason I do it is just to get all the breathing and keep my voice in shape to hit all these. Right. Down so, but, but it's cool, man. And I'm enjoying it and it's working. So it's like the shows we've been doing have been really good. And you know, the, the press we've got from it, everybody loves it. The fans love it. And, you know, so so obviously it's working, so I'm going to keep on doing it. <laughs> so I'm a fan from, you know, I'm going to give away my age here, but I'm a fan from back in the, you know, the 80s, oh, mid-80s wow. or Thank whatever it was. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm a longtime fan. Oh, but awesome. Chris is new to you guys and actually new to metal. I'll go ahead and let him explain if you want. Oh, yeah, sure. So I, I kind of, I was a big fan of hair metal in the 80s, but I was pretty young, so I like my hair metal started in like eighty seven, eighty eight, <laughs> and um, and you know I just kind of stayed in like then I got into the grunge era and whatever, uh, but then I was lucky enough to get invited to a metal festival, and when I went to that metal festival, I really only went just to support my friends who were putting it on. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, you know I was stuck on a boat with three thousand people, and they became my family. Not just the fans. There you go, brother. That's what not, I'm talking about. Not just the fans, but the bands, too. And I stay in touch with all of these people. It's where I met Bruce. Right. Originally. It's awesome. And uh, so today, I just heard my first Heavy Petting song. Oh, wow. And which song was that? In and Out of Love. Oh, God. Was it? Yeah, that was, that was the first hit single we ever had in Europe. So Yeah. Yeah. Killer. And you know, well, the funny thing now, Chris, is... Uh, Different for Bruce, who's been a fan for a long time, but you, the new stuff we've got coming out yeah. is, is, I mean, I know everybody likely says this, but it, it really is a million times better than the old stuff, because uh, Gordon and I are older, we're more mature in songwriting, and my voice is better, and I'm not screaming and trying to be Rob Halford anymore, not that bullshit, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, as much as I love Judas Priest, because they're my heroes, but it's Oh, like, Sure. The record label wanted us to be sing higher and do this, and and, and it was just silly. We said just stuck to what we wanted to do, but obviously they're in control, so that kind of sucked at the time. But uh, but the new stuff is 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 really really good. We are really excited about it, and so uh, so I look and I look forward to getting your uh, take on it once uh, once you hear all the new stuff. Since where, you've only where, just a heavy pen. So where can I go hear it? Ah, it's not going to be released yet. We're going oh. to release it in November. Okay. We're actually, we're, yeah, we're actually going to play uh, on this tour. We're going to be, uh, we're going to play four songs, four new songs on on in the set, and then we're going to go out. We're going to have a release party in London and in November, and then in Glasgow, which is our old hometown kind of stuff. Right. And then we will do. We'll do a live set as well for each of these things, and we'll play about ten songs off the new album. So, uh, oh wow, yeah. So it's going to be pretty exciting, and uh, we we definitely geared everything around uh, the songs that we write. We can definitely uh, pull them off live. So, uh, gotcha. Uh, yeah. So that that was the main thing. That, that was main criteria when Gordon and I were sitting discussing. Okay, what we're going to do? How are we going to write all the new songs? So, right. But and Bruce, I mean you as well. I mean, because uh, obviously since you've been a fan for a while, 
but it's uh, it's it's the same heavy pattern, obviously, because uh, me and Gordon are writing the stuff, but it's right. like, uh, the vocals, like, all the harmonies that are still there and all that kind of stuff. It's just that, uh, you know, technology's caught up a bit, so we use everything. We don't use keyboards or anything, but, I mean, everything else, all the sounds are all kind of new, and and, sure. and and it's heavy, and they've made sure that the guitars are as heavy as shit. So nice. Fucking right. Yeah, so we're really excited about it. That's awesome. I wish you were playing somewhere here by me on this run, but it's mostly oh, European stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so are we. I wish we. Hopefully, that's not going to happen next year. Once we do the <clears throat> the Monsters of Rock cruise, then after that, and we've got the new album, and then we'll have all sorts of new people involved with the band as far as uh, looking after us and kind of stuff. So then that's going to start gearing ourselves to start moving moving further afield now instead of just Europe we'll try and get the American thing sorted out yeah. and the Japanese and all that kind of stuff other places that we used to play so you're playing the Monsters of Rock Cruise yeah when is that ah uh, well this would be the first time for us this is uh, obviously I think this is number 9 or number 10 I think uh, and I could be totally wrong in that but I mean I've, I've watched it for years and I've watched all the other bands <clears throat> who I've known for most of my life, you know, yeah. being friends with me since the 80s and stuff, just have a good old time. Yeah, and, and you know, you walk around on the boat, you get to see all the all your fans, they get to see you, and, uh, you know, it's a, it, it'll probably be really intimate, you know? Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, hopefully so. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't, I've don't. i only saw different videos of certain things, like on YouTube and stuff like that. I haven't really saw... Uh, the, where everybody plays, you know, right. what kind of venues you play on on the boat. I know there's some right on the decks and whatever, but or else there's some indoors inside. I guess some of the, I guess they get clubs or whatever. I don't know what the deal is. But. Yeah, they have on the boats. So that was my my first metal festival was a cruise. It yeah, seventy thousand tons of metal. So the way they have it, they have they have a pool deck stage, and then the ship has a theater. So there's there's the theater, and then there's a smaller venue as well. See, that's cool. I've never been on a cruise. For some reason, I've always steered clear of them. Uh, I don't know why. I just, I guess, I, I don't know. I don't really know about it. So I've never been on a cruise, so this would be my first time yeah, ever. It's a good time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, so we're going to be fans as well, because I'm looking forward to seeing all the other bands. Oh, yeah. You know? I think that was one of the coolest experiences of, of the metal cruises I've been on. Is you go to see a band, but all the other bands are there watching the other watching the band. <laughs> you know, yeah. in one case, in one case, um, a band was going on, and they wanted to finish five minutes early so that they could catch the set <laughs> of this other band that they wanted to see. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, that would be cool. Uh, yeah. that'd be, hell, that- that so, sounds like fun. So they wanted so to, they wanted to start their set five minutes early so they could make the set of the other band. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that is so, really cool. So, Hamey, I don't know. Uh-huh. You guys have probably played a few shows and you're getting ready to play a bunch more. I imagine yeah. you're seeing like different generations, like people my age bringing their kids to the show, oh, right? God. Introducing, yeah. and that's got to be a pretty cool feeling. Yeah, I mean it is. It's it's kind of it's kind of weird because you see people that are our age who are in like their mid fifties and all that kind of stuff. You know that that have been into music for so long, and then you see people in their forties and thirties, and then their twenties. And and in fact, we did this show, and uh, it was actually it was in Glasgow. So it was the first time we'd ever played back in Glasgow, and that was a year ago. And we were playing with Angel, the old American band Angel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a huge yeah. fan. So, yeah, so am I. So, so we were playing. We were playing with them. We did like 10 shows with those guys. And so we were playing Glasgow. And so I was talking to Punky and stuff. And he's like, man, well, I'm, we've never played here. So I'm telling them all about Glasgow and all this kind of shit. And I'm like, man, it's going to be cool. You and Frank, you'll dig it, man. It's going to be great. And so we were all out there and everybody get different meet and greets and all this stuff. And, and this this young girl comes walking up and I'm like, She's, she's, got all this, she's got albums to be signed and stuff. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, oh, sure, no problem. I've signed and I'm asking her name and talking to her. And I'm like, I hope, don't, if you hope you don't mind me asking, but I said, how old are you? And she goes, I'm 16. And I went, wow. you're shitting me. <laughs> and she goes, no. I said, well, how did you get in the heavy pet and you're 16? And she goes, oh, my mom and dad are, friend, are fans. 
And I said, what, are they here as well? And she's like, oh, yeah, they're over there. And yeah. so I get them over. and So, so it's real cool. So really <laughs> yeah. not generational. You know what I mean? That's awesome. That's very cool. Yeah, so it was real neat. And so then you start seeing all different younger people. You start paying more attention. And then it's like, so, so, so I think it's cool. So we, we range the, the ages. The, like I said, they go from, like, from that young girl all the way up to, you know, in their 50s. So okay. it's, it's, it's pretty neat. So I know you mentioned Punky, and I know he turned in his guitar a few years ago. I imagine you still yeah. keep in touch with him. But was is the writing process a lot different now since he was one of the original members? Or ah, uh, yeah, it's well. I guess see, we all wrote different stuff. I mean, we all we all can, there's certain songs that we all contributed to. You know, it would either be me, Gordon, Punky, and Gary, and all that, that kind of stuff. And right. then there's uh, the songs that Gary and Gordon wrote. Then there's some songs that me and Punky wrote, and then there's songs that me and Gordon wrote. So, uh, so when we first started talking about getting it back together, you know, Gordon's like, "Well, I've got this batch of songs over here," and I said, "Well, I've got all these songs over here that I've written for years and uh, with different people." And uh, so let's just listen to them, and we listened, and we picked out the best ten of those, and then we went, "Okay, well, let's now we know we've got ten really cool tunes here. Let's you and me just." buckle down and write a bunch of shit and see how all that turns out. And we did, and it was like, damn, man, this doesn't sound half bad. And right. then, you know, and then we've got a new guitar player who took Punky's place, Dave, uh, Dave Aitken. And so Dave joined in, and he came in with a few songs, and we were like, hell, this, this is awesome. You know, this, this is better than what it was originally. So, right. uh, so we were really excited, you know. So I thought it would be a problem, but actually at the end of the day, Bruce, it hasn't turned out to be a problem whatsoever. So, is he still good? Do you still talk to him? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, well, I'm hoping we're playing Glasgow in September. We're playing, we're playing in Holland, and then we come over from Holland and Belgium, and then we're going straight to playing Glasgow, I think. And uh, hopefully, Punky's going to be in town. And he's going to be the show. Oh, so, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that would be real neat. That would be the first time we've seen him in. Uh, I mean, I've spoke to him on Facebook and stuff, like messaging each other, but I haven't seen him maybe for about uh, a year and a half, likely. So since he decided to call it a day. Cause we actually, guys, go ahead, sorry. No, I was just going to say, because he, when we decided to put it back together, me, him, and Gordon uh, met down in London and we rehearsed and it was good. But, you know, Punky was having a lot of health issues and stuff. And so I, I was real proud of him that he decided to do one show. And we did this festival in Scotland, and that was going to be the like the teaser plus the thing to see. Okay, let's see if we get a great reaction, then let's talk about getting back together again and really going for it and and, and having fun. And so after we did the show, it went great. And Gordon and I were sitting going, "Okay, I'm in, I'm in." And we're like, "Punky, you want to do this?" And he's like, "No." It took everything I had to actually play the guitars in these songs because he was having problems with his fingers and stuff. Oh, right. Man. And uh, yeah, so he was having major arthritic kind of problems, whatever. And so it was real difficult for him. He just says, look, man, no, I won't be able to, I can't play like I used to. And if I can't do that, then, you know, I just, it's going to kill me. So right. we were like, man, hey, that's cool. You're fine, baby. We love you. It's up to you. If you want to do it, great. If you don't. And so he backed out. And then that's when we get Dave in. So, so that was pretty neat. So we get sure. another guitar player to take his place. So how did you meet Dave then? Uh, we've known Dave for, <clears throat> well, God. I mean, Dave, the good thing about Dave is Dave is Scottish also. So he, we've known him from the 80s. Or I, that's the early 80s, late, late 70s, early 80s. He was, uh, he was a guitar player in, a, in another band and all that kind of stuff and yeah. he was a, a bit younger than us but so we'd all known each other because he was a fan of heavy pen and then he ended up joining uh he became the guitar player i don't know if you guys know but there's a there, in the 90s there was a big scottish band but they were in europe and not they were called gun and uh okay and so so they i mean they toured with everybody the stones uh def leopard oh, wow. so they, they played stadiums and all that during the 90s and had a great time and so uh they split up. So Dave was a guitar player on Gun for a long, long time. And and so then he did his own thing for, you know, for, for 10, 15 years, whatever. And then uh, Gordon got in touch with him and said, hey, would you be interested? And he's, uh, he said, before we put this out to everybody, 
would you be interested in just coming up and, and jamming with us and seeing if you dig it, if you want to do it? And he's like, yeah. So they called me and I was like, okay, well, that sounds cool. So I flew over from, from here in Texas and I'm, uh, I met them in rehearsal studio in London and, uh, we sat with Dave, and it was like, damn, man, okay, this, this, it gelled. It worked straight off the bat. So we were like, okay, but we don't need to look for another guitar player. You're the guy. So Nice. Nice. Yeah, so it was it was a really easy process, which I guess which was great because, again, that was kind of worrying because of that. Oh, shit, now we need to find a new guitar player, right. you know? So, but it just, it was an easy process, and it worked out. It was meant to be, really. I, I, would, I would say that. So that was cool. Beautiful. Can I ask what you're doing in Texas? Uh, I, well, <laughs> I used to. Well, I've lived here. I've lived in America for a long, long time. And uh, I played in different bands and did different things. And then I get into real estate. And uh, so I sold a whole bunch. Of, I started working for different companies and sold real estate. Uh, then moved to Texas about 10 years ago and uh, started working for a real estate company here. And... Uh, so that was it. That's what really brought me. My wife is uh, she works in the gas and oil industry. Okay. So so obviously Texas, Houston yeah. is a, that's yeah, a yeah. huge hub for that. So that was the the main reason that we were here. But so I was doing real estate until we decided to put the whole band back together and uh, and I do that full time because I'm always flying back and forwards. Uh, back and forth to London all the time. So. Oh yeah, no, I was just I just thought we were talking to you from Scotland. And then oh, you're no, like, no, no. oh, I flew from Texas. And I was like, what? <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Houston, Texas, baby. Nice, <laughs> nice. A, at this moment in time, it's 106 degrees outside my yeah. door. Wow, you know, I like, here's what's funny about this conversation right now. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bruce is what? the only American, but we all live in America. <laughs> now, now, wait a second. Amy, that was 106 degrees Fahrenheit, correct? Yeah. Yeah, see, yeah. Chris is from Canada. He doesn't understand the the normal oh, measures of I don't anything. Get, I don't get Fahrenheit, man. <laughs> I've been trying for a year and a half. I still don't get it. How long did it, <laughs> How long did it take you to convert your well, brain? No, I guess, yeah. I mean, the, and now it's the complete opposite because now when somebody says, "Thank you," like, when, yeah, when I talk to the guys in and and in London and stuff, and they go, "Well, it's thirty-one degrees." Something, something. I'm like, what? What do you mean? It's 31 degrees. And you're thinking, <laughs> fuck, man, that's got to be cold as shit. And they're like, no, it's hot. And then they say it's Celsius, and I'm like, oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> so, so I've totally forgot about that. I'm, I'm, I'm just Americanized now. Okay. Well, so maybe it'll happen. Somehow to me. on this show, somehow on this show, this has become like the running thing of. Um, Fahrenheit versus Celsius, and it usually comes up. And Chris will bring it up in almost every conversation. So, but it's because I'm trying to. It's because I'm trying to fucking learn Fahrenheit. It's a nonsensical system. Yeah, it's, uh, there's too much brain work goes into that stuff when they start. Because I was over there two weeks ago. We're playing in. Uh, we're, we're playing in Germany. We did like I think we did like eight shows in Germany, and uh, it was hot as crap and. I guess in Britain and Europe, it was the hottest few weeks they've had in like years and shit like that. Yeah, I and, saw that. And, and yeah, and everybody's saying, "Oh man, it's going to be hot today." It's like it's, it's forty degrees, it's forty degrees, forty Celsius, and all that. <laughs> oh. And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm like what?" So, and but it's just it's just weird, I guess. And the other thing now is like. Uh, Bruce isn't the only American on the show now because I'm American now as well. See oh, him, American. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so my theory here, Hamey, is if you're going to move to America, you got to at least assimilate. Hey, I'm working oh, on yeah, it. I'm time. working on yeah. it, all right? I'm working on it. I've changed. Well, how long has he been? How long, Chris, how long have you been here? I've been here since uh, February of 2018. Oh, well, I mean, that's still time. Hell, it took me... I came here after we did the uh, God, which tour was that? We did the, the the Rock Ain't Dead World tour, and that finished in like '86. And I went back to do another album in London. I came back here, and I was living in California at the time. And uh, I was sharing an apartment with uh, Tommy Thayer, who's the guitar player for. Oh Christmas. yeah, yeah. But back in those days, Tommy was uh, the guitar player for Black and Blue. Yeah. And, uh, 
So him and I were sharing an apartment, and it was like, oh shit, it's time to. Eat. I'm going. I'm, I'm not going back. I'm just going to buy a place here. And that was it. So '86 was like the first time I bought a place here in America, and then uh, I've been here ever since, and just travelled back and forth. Whereas the rest of the guys would <clears throat> come and play, and then fly back to Europe and go to Scotland or London, wherever they were going. And right. Then I would just. I would just stay in America. So, so I've been here a long time. So. Yeah. I'm. I'm. My wife moved me down here, and oh. <laughs> you know, tr- <laughs> trust me. I'm learning. I'm trying to learn. I've changed everything. I no longer can see Celsius on anything. And you're, dri- I- and you're driving on the proper side of the road now? <laughs> well, in Canada, it's the same. We drive on the right. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, so yeah. Canada the same? Well, I guess I must be drunk when I'm in Canada. I was on the other side of the street. Hey, Chris is usually drunk when he's in America, so we're good. Well, That's my boy. That's what I'm talking about. So they, call me, they call me out of Canada, Chris. That used to be a thing when I go on holidays, but now it's just all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to America, Chris. I'm yeah. loving it, man. I'm loving it. I'm having a great time down here. Cool. Well, whereabouts are you living? I'm living in D.C. Oh, you are? You're in D.C. Where are you, Bruce? I'm in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, okay. That's a beautiful area. Yeah, I like it here a lot. I should preface it. I'm not exactly in D.C. I'm in North uh-huh. Virginia. Okay, no, uh, yeah, I was thinking that. Uh, yeah, I've got friends that live in D.C. and it's, you know, they live in, uh, oh, God, what's the place right out, outside of D.C.? Arlington? Uh, uh, no, because that's, that's getting to Virginia there. It's, oh. Georgetown? Uh, Georgetown, yeah, they live in yeah. Georgetown. Yeah, it's nice there. Yeah. So, Hamie, years yeah. ago, uh, did you, when you guys first split up or whatever, did you ever imagine you'd be putting this thing back together? Was that on the... Docket or no, is it just no, not at all, not at all. I think because it was like like everything, Bruce. It was like we'd we'd been together for a long, long time, and you know we'd tell we we did so many tours. We'd been touring since like even before we get a record deal. So we've been touring and playing everywhere since like 1980, and then right. once we get the record deal, we were doing like world tours with every album. So we were away for constantly all the time, and then. Obviously, what what comes with that being back in the day is the is the alcohol comes with it, and then uh, the drugs yeah. and everything else. And so it's uh, eventually all catches up with everybody. And by the time nineteen eighty nine came along, and we were uh, sitting there supposed to be going to be doing another album and stuff, uh, members were leaving and coming back and leaving and coming back. And then eventually, it just kind of we just went, you know what? everybody was burned. Everybody had their own demon, you know, and it was yeah. just like, no, I'm, I'm done. And so when it, when it finally split up, it was like, we all just went our separate ways. And we never, I never spoke to the guys again until, uh, shit, 2000, 2006, I think, or 2007. Oh, wow. oh really? Oh yeah. No. And we split up, man. We just all booked and just all went our separate ways for, and never spoke to each other again for a long time. And the only reason we spoke in 2006 and seven was because, uh, I mean, every year uh, we were always asked to get back together and reform and stuff. And it was mainly for the Japanese. We would say, man, you guys got to do another album. Let's do this, do that, and come tour and blah, blah, blah. And for whatever reason, uh, one of us, or more than one of us, uh, at, at the beginning it was like everybody said, nah, 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 nah. But as time went on, someone would go, well, let's do it. Then somebody else would say, no, I don't want to do it. So it, so it never came to anything. But then when the Japanese called us last time in 2007, we were like, ah, okay. So for the first time, the five of us all agreed at the same time. And right. went, okay, uh, enough waters went under the bridge. Everybody's cool. Everybody's more level-headed now. Let's do it. But then... Uh, they decided to do uh, – because what was going to happen was they were going to do an anthology, and they were going to release an anthology, and, 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 and they eventually did it. They eventually called it uh, – I think they called it Pet and, uh, Petology or something like that, whatever it was. Right. And they did like, the first two albums and a, a live DVD for London and uh, another live thing for Japan or whatever it was. And then after that, it was going to be, okay, well, let's do new material, do an album and do the tour and, and da 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 And so everybody was up for it. And then all of a sudden, one by one, after all the phone calls all started 
after the the excitement started wearing off, <laughs> it was like the same shit started happening during <laughs> phone calls and people right. would start arguing. You know what I mean? And it was like, ah, uh, fuck this. No, it's back to the way it was. And so one by one, everybody bailed. And I think at the end of the day, it was me, Gordon, and Gary that were left. And then Gary booked. And then me and Gordon, and it was like, then Gordon just went, nah, fuck it. And I was, so I was, I was the long guy standing. And the Japanese were like, nah, we want the whole band. And da 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 da. And I was like, oh, hey, that's cool. It ain't no big deal. And so they did the pedology, and we just never did anything again. So, hmm. so then fast forward. Uh, so that was like 2007. And then fast forward to, uh, 2016, I was uh, sitting, I hadn't spoke to, yeah, for 2007, I hadn't spoken to them from 2007 to 2016, so. Wow. Yeah, yeah, when we decided, there was a lot of, there was a lot of animosity between <laughs> between oh, the I mean, lawyers for know, a long time. You're touring on a bus, you're living in each other's underwear, drinking yeah. too much, doing whatever right, yeah. else comes your way, you know. Yeah, it's Think, expected. Yeah, oh yeah, it's yeah. going to happen. yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, a lot of it just never went away, and and that was one of the things when because how this saw uh, I don't this might be a question you were going to ask, Bruce, so I apologize. No, it's fine. No, go. Uh, one of the so 2016 showed up, and I was sitting on the beach in Florida with my daughter, and we're sitting talking, and she's like, "Why don't you put the band back together?" And I was like, what? She's like, why don't you put, everybody else is putting bands back from that era. Why don't you do it? And I'm like, hell, no, 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 no. So she kept on asking the whole time we were at the beach. And I said, okay, well, maybe when I go home, I'll, I'll call, I'll call Gordon and Gary and just see how, get the lay of the land and see how anybody feels. And so I thought a bit more about it. And then I called up uh, Gary and which totally freaked him out because he picked up the phone and, uh, and I had to get his number for these other people. And so when he's like, how the fuck did you get my phone number? <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, well, hey, nice to talk to you as well. And so he starts laughing in the two. He's, he's like, well, what? He says, well, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing great. How about you? He's like, no, fine. And I said, uh, you want to put the band back together? And he's like, no way. I was like, he goes, I've been thinking about that. I says, well, you want to try it? He goes, yeah. He says, I'm in, but you're going to have to call Gordon. And I said, uh, okay. So he gave me Gordon's number. I called Gordon. And uh, him and I started the dialogue and started talking. And everything went cool. And then we called the bass player. Then we called Punky. And, or I called everybody. And eventually I said, okay, let's have a conference call. And we started that way. And But then it kept on, it dragged out for about, a, I don't know, six, seven, eight months to the point where, I didn't think it was going to happen, and I, then I was in New Orleans. I was, well, this is <laughs> this is bad. But I'm sitting, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting in a, I'm sitting in a bar on Bourbon Street, you know, and I'm getting hammered and having a great time, and my phone goes, and I'm like, where the fuck is this? And I, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh shit, it's Gordon. So I'm like, hey, dude, I said, how you doing? He's like, you want to put the band back together? And I said, didn't we have this conversation about eight fucking months ago? <laughs> and uh, he's like, yeah. He says, like, but let's let's just do it. Everybody's in. And I was like, okay, okay, I'm in. As long as there's, if, I, if you say everybody's in, then I'm definitely in. And so I flew to. That was like in August. Yeah, that was August. And then I flew in in September, like the, a month later, to London. And uh, we, I walked into a rehearsal studio and really think about this. None of us have seen each other for 25 years. Okay. Wow. And so I walk into the studio and, uh, and everybody's looking at each other and we're like, damn, man, you've changed. Well, you've changed. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, and so, so it was weird, but, uh, but it was great. And we said, okay, well, let's jam and see how it goes. And we, we tried it out and uh, it worked. We went, shit, man, this sounds good. So we, we, so we, we rehearsed another couple of days, and then I had to fly back to the States. But, so we, but we realized it could work. And then it was during that point that uh, Conky was talking about how he didn't feel well, but he was up to doing one show. And then little Brian, the bass player, uh, he, 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 just called, he just refused to talk to anybody after I came back. 
And so we finally find out why later. And he's like, he, his, his exact line was, he's like, fuck this, man. I'm still mentally scarred for the last time. We were on the <laughs> <laughs> so, nice. So he was a bass player. And so he just booked, he bailed on the whole thing. And so we ended up getting, uh, and then Gary, it was dragging on too long for Gary. And Gary decided that he wanted to do his own thing. And so it left me, Gordon and Punky. And so we got another bass player, another drummer and said, now nah, let's go for this. Let's do it. And so, and that's the nice. way it's progressed. So pretty cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's Chris? great. Well, uh, you're the singer, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I don't know. Like, oh, no, you're fine, man. You, please forgive me. Oh, no, you're fine. Do you play guitar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't, play, I don't play on stage or anything like that, but, I mean, obviously, I've played guitar for years, and I use it to write songs and stuff, but I don't, oh. I don't play live. Okay. Yeah, I don't play live. I'm no. building, I'm building, to, I'm building I'll, my... I'll leave that to people that are better than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ask because I'm building my dream 80s guitar right now. I have a oh you are I have a vintage Ibanez uh, DT three fifty, which is like they only made it for one year in eighty four. It's like a destroyer, but more like a star shape. Oh wow! And I need to put pickups in it, and I want it to be like a authentic eighties sound, you know? Wow! And I just don't know what pickups to choose. So I was like, oh, maybe you know. <laughs> no, no, I would I wouldn't be the guy to talk, but I tell you. Uh, I can, I'll find out for you and let you know. Oh, that'd be awesome. I'll talk to, I'll talk to Gordon and those dudes. And, uh, cause obviously, Gordon's been getting some uh, guitars made as well. Because he, I mean, he's, he's got guitars out of the ass, man. He's got tons of them. Because back in the day, we had we had deals with Washburn and Gibson and right. a bunch of other stuff. So he got uh, some special guitar. He had his own guitar collection that was done by uh, Hamer. By oh, Hamer wow. Guitar. Wow. And, uh, and so, and those were the phantoms. Were those were the blue and red, and they had or blue and black, and then they get red and black. And so he had a whole bunch of collection of them at the time. And so he's just getting a new phantom made, actually. So uh, wow. and it's just like just like you, he wants it back, authentic, eighty sound with the eighty pickups, everything, just back at, from what it was back in the day, just to stick through a Marshall head. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, and just just jam it out. So. Uh, yeah, so I can find out from him easy peasy. I mean, it's kind of a know. weird question for me to ask since we're interviewing him. <laughs> <laughs> <Just like, laughs> if you know anything no about No problem. If anyone's ever met me, they know that I'll just shove myself into anything. <laughs> 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 anytime. Typical Canadian. Yeah, fucking we're polite. There you go. We're polite, but we're pushy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where did you where did you live in Canada? Vancouver. Oh, I've got family living in Vancouver. Oh, yeah, whereabouts? Oh, I, I wouldn't have a clue. I haven't seen them in for so long, but oh, I know yeah. my my aunt and her husband live there, and then their two, uh, their two kids uh, live there. So, I mean, my brother back in Scotland, my family go visit them and do all that kind of stuff, but I haven't been over there for years, so I couldn't remember where. I just know it's Vancouver. They used to live in Toronto. Oh, and yeah. then they moved. To, then they moved to Vancouver. Uh, yeah, Van- about, Vancouver yeah, is a beautiful years. city. Beautiful city. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, it is a beautiful place. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, <laughs> that's all I've. <laughs> that's all I've got. Hey, me, Chris, you got anything else? Hey, I'm not asking to put Vagisil in anything, so I think we should be no. okay. <laughs> you had to catch the beginning of Bruce and yeah. I's conversation. <laughs> my dog. My dog has a yeast infection on his paws. So, oh, there you go. So Bruce phones, and my dog is like beside me, <laughs> and I turn around, and he's licking his paw, and I'm like, "Ah, shit, Bruce, give me one second. I got to put Vagisil on my dog's paw." He's just like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Sorry, Hamid, hey, this is this is not the most professional <laughs> podcast going. We're we're all over the map, but uh, sounds good to me, man. Sounds good. Sounds <laughs> hey, real. If, so that's hey, cool. if, if people want to get in touch with you or find you on the web, how can they do that? Ah, well, actually, we're on Instagram, uh, and uh, obviously, you can get us on the, the Heavy Petting Official, uh, heavypettingofficial.com. You can get us on Facebook, all, all that kind of stuff. We're basically on, I guess, we're, 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 uh, we're on everything these days. Okay. So, which, and I'm terrible about it because, hey, I've got, 
I've got a brand new iPhone, and I sometimes I look at it and go, "What the fuck? <laughs> you know, why, why are you to, why are you talking to me? Why right. why is this? What button did I press? What the hell did I do? <laughs> you know?" And I'm saying, I mean, I don't know how many times I've done something, and all of a sudden it's like uh, three, four in the morning in Britain. And I'm videoing everybody. I'm video calling everybody, and they're picking up the phone. Now and I'm nice. like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> nice. And I'm like, oh, sorry. So I never knew I was doing it. They're like, good God, man. It's four in the morning, for fuck's sake. Like, okay, nice. sorry. <laughs> technically, as my wife says, I am technically challenged. Thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure, guys. My pleasure. I've- Another fantastic one. What a nice guy. <laughs> What a great interview. Again, we seem to get some really good ones. Oh, yeah, yeah. He sat through you telling him about putting badges still on your dog. So <laughs> if he didn't hang up by that point. <laughs> I just felt that we had a rapport going and it was, you know, I could bring it up again. <laughs> Boy, I still got I got so many emails after the first one where you re, re, uh, rehashed that story of the bathroom. Oh, God. Right. <laughs> So now we're just going to add more shit to the, uh, the we emails. Pimples on the ass, ball sacks, and oh, yeah. badges still on dog's paws. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening. Uh, I encourage all you guys, if you're not familiar with Heavy Pet, and go out and check them out. If you are familiar, this is going to be a great interview. Yeah, super nice guys. Check it out. I can't wait to check out their new record, too. And thanks for listening. Cheers. Keep it metal. Metal.